The potential evolution of the United States Air Force's fleet has recently become a topic of intense discussion. In a surprise development, President Donald Trump has said that he wants the United States to develop a twin-engine version of the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, which he has named the F-55. Exactly how far such a concept has progressed at this stage is very much open to question, but it does raise some interesting questions about the futures of both the F-35 and the F-47, the Air Force's next-generation crewed stealth fighter. Trump was speaking in Qatar today, where he also visited U.S. forces stationed at al Udaid Air Base. The U.S. President's Qatar visit also coincided with Boeing securing its biggest-ever deal for wide-body airliners, Qatar Airways ordering 167 77X and 787 jets worth $96 billion. On the F-35, Trump said, We're doing an upgrade, a simple upgrade, but we're also doing an F-55. I'm going to call it an F-55, and that's going to be a substantial upgrade, but it's going to be also with two engines, because the F-35 has a single engine. I don't like single engines. In response to our questions about the F-55, a Lockheed Martin spokesperson said, We thank President Trump for his support of the F-35 and F-22 and will continue to work closely with the administration to realize its vision for air dominance. While we will return to the simple upgrade later, the big development here is the idea of a twin-engine F-35, something that has not been previously touted on a serious level since the Joint Strike Fighter program was launched. Engine options for such an aircraft might well include those being developed under the Next Generation Adaptive Propulsion Program, which has been focused primarily on developing new engines as part of the Next Generation Air Dominance Initiative, leading to the new F-47 Next Generation Stealth Fighter. There has long been speculation that NGAP might also feed into other advanced aviation programs. In January of this year, the Air Force increased the value of NGAP contracts with General Electric and Pratt & Whitney, giving them both a ceiling of $3.5 billion. Previously, the Pentagon looked at the option of re-engining the F-35 as part of the Air Force's Adaptive Engine Transition Program, AETP. In 2023, the Air Force announced its intention to cancel AETP in favor of upgrading the existing Pratt & Whitney F-135 engine currently used on all variants of the F-35. Nevertheless, Congress subsequently authorized additional funding for AETP. Work on AETP has also been leveraged in the NJAP designs from General Electric and Pratt and & Whitney, known as the XA-102 and XA-103, respectively. It's also possible that such a change could incorporate existing engine core designs. At the same time, a twin-engine F-35 would be heavier and more expensive, and it would bring with it an increased burden in terms of support and maintenance. Regardless, it will require an extensive redesign of the F-35 airframe and numerous subsystems to accomplish. In the case of the short takeoff and vertical landing STOVL, F-35B, there would appear to be no realistic option of creating an equivalent twin-engine version of the F-55. On the other hand, there are some compelling arguments for a twin-engine aircraft in the class of the conventional takeoff and landing, CTOL F-35A and the carrier-capable F-35C. The Navy in particular would value the benefits that a twin-engine F-35 would bring, with these advantages becoming even more pronounced when operating from a carrier deck. Here, safety margins are even more critical, and the ability to carry a heavier payload is especially prized. Still, there have been no known major complaints about the F-35C's single engine, and no aircraft have been lost from carriers due to engine failures. It's notable that China's J-35, which is a broad equivalent to the F-35, and which is frequently described as a clone of the US-designed jet, has featured twin engines from the outset. It, too, is intended for carrier operations. Returning to the US Navy, there is a possibility that Trump's words today might reflect developments in the service's FAXX sixth generation stealth fighter program. This came after a published report that a contract award for FA-20, potentially worth hundreds of billions of dollars, could be delayed by as much as three years. There is also the possibility that this could lead to cancellation or further postponement. 
Originally, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman were all in the running to develop the F-A-20. However, Lockheed Martin was reportedly eliminated from the competition in March of this year because its proposal did not satisfy the service's criteria, according to Breaking Defense, whose story cited an unnamed source with knowledge of the program. Could it be that Trump's F-55 comments refer to a Lockheed Martin f 20 contender, either one that was eliminated previously, but which may now be back in the running, or potentially a new proposal from the same company, based on a reworked twin-engine F-35C? At the same time, a twin-engine, land-based F-55 could be of interest to the Air Force, which has, in the past, looked at fielding some kind of cheaper crewed fighter that could operate alongside the F-47. You can read our previous analysis of what a cheaper NGAD crewed stealth fighter might look like here. Meanwhile, the U.S. Air Force is clearly struggling to afford the programs it already has on its books, with even the F-47 increasingly being seen, at least in some quarters, as a sacrifice against other urgent needs. Even with a larger budget, it would be a challenge for the service to procure the F-55 as well. This, again, might suggest that a twin-engine F-35 development would actually be a better fit for the Navy. Export customers, however, might look very favorably at the advantages that a land-based F-55 would offer. Indeed, Trump raising the prospect of such a fighter while on a visit to the Gulf region may have been calculated to alert local interest. In the past, both Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates have been linked with possible F-35 deals, and Washington may be looking at pitching the F-55 as a program in which one or both of those countries could invest. Notably, Qatar and Saudi Arabia played significant roles in developing versions of the Advanced Eagle, which the U.S. Air Force is now benefiting from those investments with its F-15X. Back in April of this year, after Lockheed President and CEO Jim Takelet described a potential upgrade for the F-35 that he claimed could deliver 80% of the F-47's capability at half its cost, using technologies developed for the F-22 and the F-47. He termed it a Ferrari version of the F-35, and it may well be this that Trump referred to as a super upgrade on the F-35. Besides the F-35, Donald Trump stated that the F-22 is also getting a super upgrade. Trump called the F-22 the most beautiful fighter in the world and said, we're going to be doing an F-22 super that would be a very modern version of the jet. He did not elaborate on what kind of upgrades would be part of this program. The F-22 is no longer in production and is anticipated to be replaced by the F-47. However, the Pentagon and Lockheed Martin are currently upgrading the aircraft to maintain its air superiority, with a focus on extending service life into the 2040s. The F-22 is being equipped with sophisticated missiles, infrared targeting pods, stealthy fuel tanks and pylons, advanced electronics, and other upgrades. Trump did not specify whether he was talking about these upgrades or an all-new upgrade program. Following Trump's remarks, Lockheed Martin, which produces both these stealth aircraft, said it wants to thank President Trump for his support of the F-35 and F-22 and will continue to work closely with the administration to realize its vision for air dominance. If you enjoy content like this, please go ahead and like and subscribe to this video because I appreciate all your support.